A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence, who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death. So just that Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to, to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, you will surely not lose your, his reward. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, loves father or mother more than me, whoever loves son or daughter more than me, whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those are some pretty tough statements. And to try to explain all of them or even try to think about them all in the short time we have, it would be very hard to do it. So I've sort of narrowed and focused down just a little bit, at least for me, and made things more understandable, and more I can express, and more my feelings toward God grew. With anything, there are many opinions and feelings, from hatred, uncertainty, to love. And people are not isolated from this. They have supporters. They have people who admire them, and they also have dis distractors. This included Jesus. If you think about the way Jesus came into Jerusalem, you had people there who just wanted to see a miracle perform. You had the Roman so soldiers who thought there might have been trouble, and you had the followers of Jesus who was waving the palms in one hand and saying glory to God in the other. One of the things I do want to talk about today is about Jesus' admirers and his followers and how it relates to you and I. Let me also say, I am not making any judgments on anybody about how they feel, whether they're an admirer or follower. 
Jesus invites all of us to a deep, intimate relationship with him. And it's up to us and how we feel about him, how we respond to it. Kierkegaard said the difference between an admirer and a follower is a follower strives to be what he admires, but an admirer, however, keeps himself personally detached from what he admires. He, fail, he fails to see what is admired and how it involves a claim on him. And thus, he fails to be or even strive to what he admires. Stated differently, an admirer, admirer is impressed by the, by the subject. A follower is devoted. An admirer applauds the subject. A follower walks the very same footsteps without any reservations, without any hidden agendas. Christ understood what it meant to be a disciple. Christ knew there was innermost and deepest harmony what he said about himself, what a disciple believed. Christ claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. And for this reason, he could never be satisfied with people who accepted his teachings but did not put him into practice or was willing to walk with him in his footsteps. His whole life on earth, from the beginning to the end, was solely based on having followers continue his work when he was gone, making an admirer almost an impossible situation. If you think about it this way, a lot of people admired Martin Luther King. Some marched with him, but not many went to jail with him. Not many got their households bombed like he did. A lot of people admired Mother Teresa, but how many people followed her to live among the destitute and the dying? The first followers of Jesus, the disciples were seen as a radical group, a life that looked different from the lives of others during that time. People saw a community who gave all who wronged them. They were seeking revenge. They saw a community that shared everything and worked together for a common good of all. They saw a community of love, peace, and nonviolence. They saw a community full of hope, a hope that allowed them to remain faithful in the face of being ridiculed, being suspiciously looked at, and being in danger. These very first followers embraced Jesus and the gospel message to the fullest possible way. They took seriously a call to love, not a little, but a lot. They took the call to forgive, not just who they, small people or anybody they liked, but all people. In a real sense, they were on fire for Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, and their work reflected it. They couldn't wait to serve God and couldn't wait to show the world their love for Jesus. And they couldn't wait to give witness of Christ's life to anyone and to all. How do you know if you're a admirer or follower? In your reflections, when you're thinking about this, ask yourself these three questions. Why are you Christian? When is the last time you thought about it? 
When's the last time we reflected on it? And if I asked you to tell anybody what being Christian is in 60 seconds, what would you say? Are you all in? It's another question. Being a follower of Jesus requires complete commitment. A true disciple of Jesus will do whatever it takes to follow him. The truth is, none of us do it very well with an absolute commitment, do we? We prefer selective commitment. We would rather customize Christianity, picking and choosing the areas which we would give our loyalty and obedience. We do it when we say, I'm a follower of Jesus. Sure, but don't ask me to forgive the person who betrayed me. I'm not going to let go of that resentment of that person. Another question you may ask yourself, have you made it on your own? Many of us started going to church because of a parent when we were little children. In fact, growing up, most of us were made to go to church. Some of us started, might have started because of a friend or a dating partner or even our spouse. You come because they liked it where you, they attended and you wanted to please them. That can be wonderful ways to introduce yourself to faith in the person of Jesus Christ. But at some point, you have to make faith your own. You have to own it. You have to demonstrate it. You have to realize it, what faith is and how it affects you. Mom and dad, your spouse, your boyfriend, a girlfriend, no one else can tell you what is your relationship to Jesus. Only you can decide. Only you can figure out what it truly means to you. Don't just answer these questions because I asked you to think about it. These questions must be constantly answered daily, hourly. Anytime any situation changes, anytime the world changes, think about these questions and react on your answer. Every day, the world waits for our response to Jesus' invitation. We demonstrate our response to Jesus by the way we make our decisions, our words, our actions to others. It's very easy to see what our decisions were and how it affected us. Christ held true to the work of the one who sent him. Are you willing to walk with him? Are you an admirer or are you a follower? And always remember this. People learn about God, not because they figured out the Trinity or the work being done by the Vatican. No. People learn about God from God-like people, people who pick up their crosses every day and do the best to follow Jesus. All of us can be God to someone. Someone who remember what God is like because they remember what we are like, the followers of Jesus, not his admirers. <laughs>